induction and lightning. So let's uh, look at this uh, video of an electroscope. And if you'll recall, there's a fur rubbing on a rod that charges the rod. And we touch the uh, electroscope. And you see that the electroscope legs separate because they have charge and um, opposite charges, uh, sorry, like charges repel. But if you look carefully at that video, you realize that the legs actually start to separate even before uh, touching the electroscope. So uh, it seems natural that when the rod has touched the electroscope and transfers excess charge into the electroscope that the legs would separate because uh, like charges repel. Uh, but why is it that the legs actually uh, start to separate even before um, the rod touches the electroscope? Well, what is happening here is electrostatic induction. So uh, in this diagram, if we have a rod that is positively charged, then the negative electrons uh, in the electroscope uh, are drawn to the top because opposite charges attract. And uh, those electrons uh, are stripped out of the atoms uh, which are in the rest of the electroscope. And so that leaves the bottom part uh, positively charged. And so the legs will separate just by the induction of drawing the negative charges to the top, leaving positive charges on the bottom. Now we have a similar effect um, with static cling. Uh, so here I have a, a balloon which I rub to get the balloon charged up. And uh, now you see these styrofoam pellets are all attracted uh, to the balloon and stick on the balloon. Uh, there's a similar effect when um, I take a balloon, in this case a long balloon, and I get it charged up. Now in this case, instead of having something stick to the balloon, I'm having the balloon stick to the wall. So now the there's static cling between the balloon, which is charged, and uh, the blackboard there, which is actually still neutral. Uh, so uh, you should realize there's a, uh, a bit of a difference between um, electrostatic induction when you have a conductor uh, in which electrons move easily. So with the electroscope, uh, if the rod is positively charged, then the electrons all run to the top of the electroscope, leaving the bottom of the electroscope uh, with positive charge. Uh, with an insulator, the electrons don't uh, easily move around, but what they can do is within each styrofoam molecule, uh, if the balloon, say, was negatively charged, the uh, electrons can shift to the uh, within each molecule so that they are away from the balloon, uh, leaving positive charge closer to the balloon. So this um, separation occurs within each molecule, and that uh, leads to an attraction, uh, which we see as the uh, static cling. Now, we can use uh, electrostatic induction to actually charge an object by uh, first separating the charge uh, to one side and another in a conductor, and then um, uh, removing the charge from uh, one side, uh, leaving charge on the other side. So this happens with electrophorus. So we uh, have a plastic plate, we uh, rub it with fur to get it charged, and then uh, this electrophorus, the plate is a metal plate. We bring it uh, onto the uh, plastic uh, bottom. Uh, the electrons um, are pushed 
away to the top of the plate because uh, the plastic is negatively charged. And then we touch the electrophorus plate uh, and then the electrons run into our hand and now we're left with a positively charged uh, plate. So let's uh, see what this looks like. So here you, you see on the right the uh, electrophorus. So I rub the plastic plate with the fur. I place this on there. I have now charged the electrophorus and you see that the metal can is attracted to the uh, electrophorus plate. Now this uh, demonstration also uh, lets you see an effect which is that uh, when the charges in the metal can are separated, okay, so again remember the uh, electrophorus plate has a positive charge that attracts the electrons uh, to one side of the can, uh, leaving the opposite side uh, positively charged. Well, the um, electrophorus plate is positively charged, so uh, those electrons which are close to uh, it on that side of the can uh, cause an attraction force. Now, the positive charges on the opposite side of the can uh, create a repulsion force, but because they are farther away from uh, the charged plate, uh, that force is weaker. The electrons closer to the plate, uh, because of the proximity, that force is larger, and so we have a, a net attraction force, even though the metal can is still neutral. Now, uh, this uh, use of um, uh, this effect of charging uh, by induction is uh, also demonstrated in this uh, Wimhurst machine. So let me just show you this very nice video from uh, MIT that uh, illustrates their uh, Wimhurst machine. So it has a pair of um, plastic wheels with metal plates and a set of brushes. Those brushes are going to collect the charge uh, that develops on the metal plates. So, uh, and then you'll see the, uh, the amount of charge in a moment. So the uh, plates, as you see, there's a pair of metal plates with uh, brushes on each side. And by induction, uh, charge builds up on each of the metal parts as they spin past each other. And you saw from those sparks it uh, develops a rather high voltage. Now uh, I wanted to show you that because there's a similar effect which develops the high voltage in lightning storms. So you have the circulation of the winds and the rain within the uh, lightning storm and that causes uh, an accumulation by induction of uh, negative charge near the bottom of the cloud and positive, leaving positive charge at the top of the cloud. Now, sometimes the uh, lightning is within the cloud from the negative to the positive part of the cloud or from the negative part of one cloud to the positive part of another cloud. But the interesting part is the lightning that hits the ground. Now, the ground becomes positively charged because of induction. So the negatively charged cloud induces a positive charge um, on the ground. Uh, Benjamin Franklin studied lightning quite a bit and he developed a way of detecting an approaching lightning storm by detecting this induced positive charge uh, on the ground. So he uh, set up uh, some metal uh, on his roof and then he connected it with a wire to a bell uh, which had a metal a ball uh, next to it. So when the bell became positively charged by induction from the storm, 
Then uh, the metal ball, as we saw the uh, aluminum can being attracted to the uh, charged electrophorus plate, uh, the metal ball would be attracted to the bell and then you would hear a ring and that would tell you that there was a lightning storm uh, approaching. So here we have a setup that uh, mimics that. The Van de Graaff generator is going to play the role of the storm. This uh, second globe is uh, just, a, just a metal ball and it would be what would be positioned on the roof of the house and we have it connected by a wire to the Franklin Bell. So let's see this in action. And, uh, okay, we're rolling. Okay, let's so. see if this works. Oh, I can feel my hair standing up. So, in uh, summary, electrostatic induction is a redistribution of electrical charge in an object that's caused by the attraction to and repulsion from uh, nearby charges. In conductors, the electrons can easily move around the object uh, due to this electrostatic induction. In uh, insulators, like uh, styrofoam, uh, the electrons uh, shift within each molecule. Uh, this is called dielectric polarization. Uh, induction uh, causes the attraction that we see in uh, static cling. And uh, lightning clouds uh, are negatively charged on the bottom, which induces a positive charge on the ground, and then a resulting uh, discharge um, between the two. And the Franklin Bells detect uh, the approaching uh, storm by detecting that positive charge uh, induced on the ground by the lightning storm. We'll see more about um, what's going on with a uh, lightning strike when we look at electric current.